It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And today we are tackling the other side of the sidewalk. I went ahead and took the liberty, since you have seen this hot mess so many times in previous videos, recent previous videos, I pulled the aeoniums that were in here and look what I unearthed. I found not one, not two, but three and a half little boulders. And I even found these super cute little ants. Who knew? So we've got a little more to work with on this side than we did on the other side where we literally started from scratch. Um, so a little different approach. I'm gonna leave my little guy. This is sort of this little farmer with you know his wheat and his pitchfork is kind of fall themed but I don't care he's been in the garden there for over a decade and he's staying and this aloe that I put in there basically is a placeholder quite a long time ago I'm not hating that you know I uh I think I'm gonna let that ride so I left that in there and I'm gonna do something a little differently on this side remember over on the other side when I literally pulled out like every rock not doing that today. Um, I don't have very, I don't have the fancy shiny rock over on this side like I did on the other. I've got a little bit of river rock, which I did pull out, but all of this burgundy, I've got a mixture of three quarter and three eighths in here. And it looks like a little bit of God knows what, but I'm just gonna throw dirt on top of it. And that's a question that you guys ask me often. Is it okay to throw soil on top of existing rock? And the answer is absolutely yes. Can't hurt a thing. Also, I wanted to point something out to you guys. As the channel grows, thank you very, very much, but it's getting more difficult for me to find the time to, to look at and to love all of your comments. I miss those days. I literally was able to read every single comment. And now that's getting to be just impossible but for those of you that are members of my channel that support the channel financially you get to choose a little icon and so every time you make a comment there's a little icon by it so it's a lot easier for me to spot those comments and analytics even highlights those for me so it makes it even easier for me to spot those comments so it occurred to me that as a way of supporting you and thanking you for supporting me I would answer some of your comments in this uh, forum so that you know that I am seeing them. Uh, Lynn from Claremont, California asks about plants that do well in a xeriscape. Lynn is a channel member. She's looking to do some xeriscaping and um, I just recently did a video where we maintained a xeriscape in Chula Vista and in that installation uh, I have a Chinocactus grusonii or barrel cactus. We have a lot of agave attenuata and agave americanas. We have portolacaria, afra, variegata, whichever type of portolacaria you might like would do, has done really well. And pretty much all of the aloes, aloe cameronii, aloe ruticope, aloe arborescence, all thriving as well as crassula, um, Argentia Sunset, the one that I love to use, and Crassula undulata have all done spectacular in that installation. And of course, any kind of cactus that you want to pull in. Hesperalos would do well in a zero escape. Uh, we did have a Dracaena Draco there as our main focal point, and somebody stole it. I know, right? But um, but any rate, I hope that helps Lynn, and I thank you so much for being a member of my channel. Okay, so let's do this. I have gone ahead and pulled together all of my accoutrement. Um, I've got leftover canned dirt in this bucket that I'm gonna dump first. Some of you have pointed out that it's difficult for you to achieve a mounded effect in areas where you live where you get heavy rainfall, which makes total sense to me. Uh, so you might want to mount up with rock first and then soil on top of that. That might help. Um, that's not quite 
moundy enough for me. So I'm gonna add a little more dirt. There we go. That feels about right. So you see how I'm just threw that dirt right on top of the rock. Now, why, I'm, why am I mounding? A couple of reasons. I love the look of undulations in a succulent garden, so I like the hills and valleys. Two, uh, I don't wanna dig. I don't wanna have to use a shovel. This way I can plant my plant just by using my hands. I don't even need a tool. Uh, and three, this bed is very, very shallow because of the footings for the courtyard, so I've only got about six inches of dirt to begin with. So this is just gonna make everybody happy. Now, after I have done my mounding, I am, well, shoot. Am I gonna stage my boulder or am I gonna plant my blue glow? I think I'll go ahead and stage my boulder. See, this agave blue glow that I picked to put in here, I chose because I've got agave potatorum on the other side and I, I kind of want there to be some symmetry, you know, a little bit of balance. The, these plants are, you know, they look sort of alike. I know that this blue glow is gonna outgrow the space at some point in a few years, and that's fine. When it does, I will move it, probably work it into one of my installations. But for now, um, based on what I had available, this was the best option. Also, when you see this come out of the can, you'll know why I chose it. Okay, let's roll oh, a brown widow. See the little spider? Okay, let's roll this. Being mindful, keep my eye on that spider. I'm gonna roll this into place. I'm gonna put this rock back here, basically where I found it. That's a good spot for it. And then I'm going to plant my plant next before I stage these smaller boulders. So I think you can probably clearly see where the plant's going right here, right? So I will make a hole for it. See, isn't that great? Look at that. I don't even need a tool, no shovel needed. Okay, it's a great use for that leftover dirt. Uh, from the nursery cans. Okay, now here's the, turns out this poor agave blue glow was a cast off from a project that we did the beginning of this year. It is now July. So back in, it was the Chula Vista project, Greg. Um, and, you know, I'm not exactly sure about why this is this way. I think we planted it and then changed our minds for some reason and took it out. But, oh my gosh, it is just as dry as a bone. Um, how, it is, how it looks so good is beyond me. But if any plant deserved an opportunity to be front and center in my garden, it's this guy. He, you have suffered enough, my, my friend, and now you are going to be rewarded by being planted in a place of prominence in my front yard. I'm just cutting off those dead under leaves. These, these leaves died because they were buried under the lip of that black planting can and did not stand a chance. So it's a really good opportunity to just clean this up, trim off all the dead so it looks its best. And since this agave blue glow has a root system, sort of, I'm gonna go ahead and water this in after I plant it because, oh my gosh, it is just so dry since it's not a cutting. Um, if you wanna slow down the growth potential of your plants, if you found what you feel like is the perfect plant for a spot in your yard, but you know good full and well then in five years it's going to be too big but you really want to enjoy it in that spot for a while just trim the roots before you plant give them a haircut don't don't cut them all off but give it a haircut and that will slow things down to a crawl okay
just amazing. This plant has been sitting over in my side yard, oh God, for six months. Poor baby. I am so sorry to have mistreated you so. Okay, here we go. My hole is definitely deep enough. Take my plant, stick it in there, and then backfill gently with my mounded soil. There's quite a bit of webbing too. You can take a brush and brush off. The spider webs are, they're a lot right now this time of year, aren't they? Because there's just such insect activity. So many muley bugs, so many aphids, so much scale. Um, and the webbing spiders are our friends because they eat those bugs. But I don't really love the look of spider webs all over my plants. Okay, wow, not bad, right? Super cute, um, not forever. And like I said, this aloe, it's really starting to color up right now. We used to be very green and now it's starting to turn kind of a russet color. I really like that. And I love this arrangement. I'm gonna take this mini boulder and stick it right here. And then we'll put this mini boulder right here. Kind of frames out the design. Then, you know, I kind of want to mirror a little bit what I did over on the other side where I had some flanking aeoniums. So I already have this mounded. And you can see this sprinkler head right here. Um, in the 12 years we've lived in this house, we've never run the sprinklers. I always hand water, so the system has been off. So I'm just going to ignore that sprinkler. Add a little more soil. And then take some of these beautiful aeoniums and trim them up and stick them in the ground. Not recommended. If you're working in a hostile climate and the sun is gonna beat down on your aeoniums all day long, or you have lots and lots of humidity or summer rains, you'll do this today, tomorrow when you come out, they will be toast. But here in the land of milk and honey, and particularly in this spot, which gets mostly shade in the later afternoon, and temps rarely exceed 80, 80 85 degrees, I can get away with it. And I love the way semi-dormant aeoniums look. They look like little roses. I just love them. They're so pretty. Aw, that is so cute. I am feeling that. All right, now over here on this side, same, same idea. However, I'm gonna leave some of this in rock. Remember the three R's of good design, rock repetition and restraint. So, I'm only gonna pull the aeoniums in. And you also, you wanna keep soil away from your foundations because it is a conduit for moisture. So do your mounding out in the middle and keep it, you can put all the rock against there you want, but keep the soil away. I'll put this little, boulder, mini boulder right there, and go grab some aeoniums. It's like going to the shoe store and getting anything you want. Oh, how fun. I love this. Okay. And guys, I mean, obviously you can do anything you want. You don't, it doesn't have to be aeoniums, but I'm just working with what I had on hand. And you can see already how this area is shaded. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon and this is already in the shade. So these are gonna do just fine for me right here. Oh my God, it's 
so cute. Now, the idea being that toning down the aeoniums, backing out, I still have a ton of them over here, is going to work in my favor from a maintenance standpoint because in the summer, they just got leggy. Well, you saw the video, you know, they don't look good. They're a mess, they drop all their leaves. So by toning down the number, that should also really save me time with maintenance. That looks really, really cute and intentional. I like that very much. And when I step back to compare notes, it looks really nice, very balanced, very symmetrical. That jasmine that I have growing over against that pillar uh, kind of balances out with this aloe here and also my little Hercules in the pot right there. So I've got decent symmetry and balance. So now I didn't have any more of that really expensive Sonora Shiner rock that I used over on the other side, but I did have some three quarter inch burgundy lava, which I also have lava on that side. So it's not gonna be matchy matchy, but it will at least coordinate. Remember, no dirt showing. You want, you know, a couple inches of rock over top of your soil is what I recommend. And remember, not only does rock top dressing look good, but it also suppresses weeds and helps retain moisture in the soil. So it has many benefits. And for those of you that are new to the channel, welcome and hang in there. This will all make sense to you very soon. Just make sure that you don't see any dirt. Lift the skirts of your plants, meaning lift them up. See all that dirt right there? Get some rock under there. It also serves to elevate your plants. And for those of you that do deal with moisture and rainfall, and water by lifting the skirts of your plants you'll put a barrier between the leaves and the wet soil which could help prevent rot so don't be cheap with the rock make sure that you've got every inch covered then when you think you're done you're not because we are also going to throw down a little ribbon. What, did I miss something? Where? Underneath? Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Greg. This thing's all, look at that. Already got me once. Ugh. I know, I know, I know. Where are your gloves? I should have gloves on, but I just really prefer not to if I can't help it. Okay, is that better, Greg? 
Do you see any dirt showing now? Nope. Okay. Oh, and then, you know, all of these leftover aeoniums, I will add to the back prison wall, which is really, really starting to flourish and fill out and look the way I dreamed that it might. So I'm really excited for the next Walkabout Wednesday to show you how that's looking since we've added all these aeoniums. All right, then to ribbon, I usually start at the, at the apex of my design space, which in this case would be up here. And sometimes it turns out to be a ribbon and sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of depends on how the rock falls, how the cookie crumbles, how much I've got. You know, I'm making, literally making this up as I go. Um, and when I'm satisfied with the look of it, then I'm done. And that should be your bar too. If you like what you've done, step away, relax, and enjoy your creation. I don't have a whole lot of river rock, so I won't be able to run the ribbon all the way through. So I'll just do an abbreviated one where I go a little heavier up here behind the agave and next to the aloe. This will be like the point of origin. And then I'll roll, move it down here. You know, running ribbons too is a really great idea if you're limited on plants. You don't have a lot of plants because the rock can take up a lot of visual space in a design. And see how the rock just makes this very, very three-dimensional? There. Wow, what a difference a few minutes makes. Let me, before I sign off, let me grab the hose we'll wash this mess off together. Okay, I'm not gonna put a lot of water on those aeonium cuttings, obviously. I'm just gonna kind of rinse all the dirt off of them. But this, and I'm not really interested in watering that aloe real heavily either because I'm not in any hurry for it to grow and I like that russet color it's turning. But this poor blue glow is so dry. You know, another thing I could have done is put a little water in the hole I dug before I sunk the plant in. Tomato, tomato. Just, you wanna make sure that before you sink succulents that your soil is very well draining. If this plant were to sit in a bunch of water, it would rot and die, but it won't. The soil, what's in here is well draining. It never rains, so the only time this is gonna get water is when I water it. Okay. Wow, I love it. And Greg showed you that over there, right? Rinse that off for you too. And you can see all the plant material that I have left to move around the back. So there you have it, another. Oh, my ants, thank you. I forgot about the ants. Now the question is, do we wanna throw the ants in over here or do we wanna move the ants in over here? I feel like since we've got the guy over here, we should put the ants over here in the potatorum bed. So we'll put our little ants on that side. Oh, super cute. Thanks for the reminder, Greg. All of a sudden, I'm feeling so inspired and so much better about these areas. Oh my gosh, it's fabulous. Okay, I, you know, no point in me standing here oogling and awing it any longer. I will take this opportunity to thank you so much for watching this video, for subscribing and following and becoming a member so that I can see your comments and make sure that I 
respond to them. So you guys have a fantastic day. I hope you're able to get out in your gardens. I really, really hope that this inspired you and helps you on your journey. This has been Laura of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.